Depo 155. Today there are a lot of updates along the entire front. When it comes to the Belgorod region, today the Freedom of Russia Legion and Russian Volunteer Corps declared that all goals of their special operation were achieved and they returned back to the base on Ukrainian territory. Soon the commander of the Russian Volunteer Corps, Denis White Rex, gave an interview and elaborated on everything that happened. First of all, he said that the most important takeaway from the operation is that the Russian bureaucracy makes them completely incapable of reacting to any unusual developments. The commander of the Freedom of Russia Legion gave the same assessment and specified that they did not face any resistance and moved freely for hours. This means that if it were a planned large-scale offensive, Russians would have lost Belgorod faster than the Kharkiv region. Secondly, Russians spent billions on erecting all sorts of fortifications along the entire contact line, which proved to be ineffective. The first line of fortifications was located around 2 kilometers from the border, while the insurgent forces managed to get 10 kilometers deep by using just two tanks. The Institute for the Study of War gave the same assessment and stated that such an easy and deep penetration emphasizes the weakness of these fortifications, at least when not fully manned by well-prepared and well-equipped soldiers. But the most important objective that these forces managed to achieve is force Russians to relocate their troops from the front. By the end of the second day, the insurgent forces started facing elements of unspecified motorized rifle detachments, which is why they promptly withdrew to the Belgorod region. The motorized rifle elements will not return to the front and will continue to stay in Belgorod because the threat of such attacks remains. In order to force Russians to relocate even more troops, Ukraine started destroying Russian forces in the Belgorod region with drone attacks. Russian sources reported that Ukrainians used up to 15 drones of various types. Russian forces that were deployed to the border reportedly suffered from grenade-dropping drones, while bigger kamikaze drones hit deep inside the Russian territories. And this is not surprising, because Ukrainian reconnaissance could observe in real time how and where Russians are redeploying their forces in response to this crisis. The strikes will likely continue to intensify, and the accumulated losses of personnel will likely prompt Russians to redeploy even more troops. But this is not the biggest strike that Russians have been facing recently. As you remember, Russians are redeploying their forces from the south to the north, not only because of the situation in Belgorod, but also because of the falling apart flanks in Bakhmut. And on top of the falling apart flanks, the Wagner Group is planning to leave Bakhmut in a few days, which further necessitates filling the void. Such a massive movement of troops is a perfect opportunity for precision strikes. Today Ukrainians conducted a powerful hammer strike on the Russian objects in Khartsysk. Local residents reported hearing multiple explosions, and Russian sources reported that Ukrainians targeted areas of deeper forces concentrations. And this is a very interesting detail, because the Russian High Command reportedly decided to substitute Wagner forces in Bakhmut with the DPR forces, so it looks like Ukrainians managed to catch them on the move. Two days ago, Ukrainians used their newest weapon and conducted a Storm Shadow missile strike on Berdyansk. The target of the strike became military facilities next to the airfield, and the missile reportedly successfully reached its predetermined destination. Some Russian military analysts quickly connected the dots with the recent strike on similar facilities next to the airfield in Mariupol and concluded that Ukrainians are planning to eliminate the most capable pilots in the Russian army. The continuation of such strikes in combination with the recently announced supplies of F-16 fighter jets could mean that Ukrainians can achieve air superiority, especially if they narrowly concentrate on a particular front. Another potent strike happened near Donetsk. Local residents reported that Ukrainians conducted multiple attacks on warehouses in different parts of the city and on the fourth attempt managed to destroy an ammunition depot that the DPR forces made on the territory of an auto center. Lastly, a fierce strike happened in the Kherson region. Several days ago, various sources reported about the relocation of unspecified detachments of Chechen forces. The information was once again leaked because a Chechen fighter was carelessly using social media. According to the unconfirmed reports, prior to this strike, around 100 troops arrived in Oleshki on 8 trucks, 5 cars and 9 armored fighting vehicles, which were likely the targets of this strike. Overall, Ukrainians continued destabilizing the situation on various parts of the front line by using the most versatile tactics, such as sabotage and reconnaissance activities in the north, successful counterattacks in the east and precision strikes on command centers in the south. 
By losing the initiative, Russian forces caught themselves in a position where they are reacting to the developments put in motion by Ukrainians. While Ukrainians in turn are destroying Russian forces that are being redeployed in an attempt to adjust to these new developments. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.